Let's one. get together to co-create a breakthrough for freedom of energy, sustenance, healing, and regeneration of the human vessel. Welcome to Physique, the Free Energy Special Interest Group, where science meets spirituality in the quest for truth and knowledge to free humanity and transform this planet into a paradise. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome to Physique. Welcome to Physique's 86th meeting. Today is the 3rd of March, and we have some wonderful speakers here with us today, and I am so excited to get started right away. Uh, well, I'm going to quickly show you the agenda for today's meeting. Just bear with me for a moment. Right, okay. Today we have the first session speaker. Uh, today's meeting on the 3rd of March, we have the 86th meeting, we have uh, returning speaker Dan Winter, who spoke at Physics 71st meeting on December 2019. Well, that was quite a while back. Uh, today he's lecturing on uh, fractal physics. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, fractal physics of global wireless power, vacuum energy, and the diamond light body. And the second session, we're going to have Boris Dragon, who is a lecturer of traditional Chinese medicine. Um, well, I go into that later in the second session. So uh, now I just wanted to show very briefly um, physics. Okay, right. So we are a platform where science meets spirituality and we hold meetings once a month. And we have uh, a couple of speakers speaking. We have two sessions, like one hour a session, one and a half hours, depending on how long the Q&A session is going to, to um, you know, drag on a bit because people have a lot of questions for the speakers. And um, if you want to write to me, go to crystal at truevisionofpeace.com, uh, write to crystal at truevisionofpeace.com. This is our website, truevisionofpeace.com forward slash physic.html. Right, without much ado, I'm going to introduce Dan Winter, the renowned Dan Winter. Right, so Dan Winter is an electrical engineer, plasma tech implosion biofeedback inventor and fractality physics researcher. Dan Winter has a multifaceted background that spans a broad spectrum of disciplines. He graduated with honors at the Jesuit University of Detroit, and he pursued graduate studies in psychophysiology and the origins of languages. Wow, he's so multi-talented. He has worked as a systems analyst with IBM, an industrial metallurgist, and a crystallographer. He has undertaken many diverse studies from quantum physics to modeling at the MIT Space Lab to developing the early biofeedback prototype equipment as Dr. Albert Axe's prodigy. Um, widely traveled, Dan has sojourned to study at the uh, Gujdiv School of uh, Sacred Gymnastics in Florence with Buckminster Fuller, the Giza Pyramids, Israel, the Andes, and at Finhorn. Dan lectures extensively around the world, especially known for his applications of mathematical modeling to optimize spiritual development as a spin-off of his research on the relationship of emotion to wavelength structure. One, one important tool developed by Dan is the heart tuner, which measures or quantizes the um, onset of conscious self-awareness by virtue of the apparent geometry of the heart harmonics being geometrically linked by progressions based on the powers of phi, the golden mean. Uh, 0.61803 Dan is a prolific writer and much of his work is available on the internet. If you just type in Dan Winter, uh, search him and you will see a long list of work that he's been doing. We absolutely love his work. The fractal nested compression of aether through ratcheting dodecahedra geometries is mind-blowing and intuitive. Dan is brilliant with his talks. 
all over the world, and then we'll talk about anything that has to do with um, physics, the universe, fractal physics of charge distribution, the vacuum, phase conjugation is his favorite subject, wave fractality, uh, golden, the perfect golden spiral in the cone, existence of sacred geometry, and so on and so forth. So now over to you, Dan. Well, well thank you. That introduction is almost scary. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So the, the title of this talk is about um, the, the, this talk is about why uh, the ancient pyramid builders did achieve uh, global uh, wireless power distribution, uh, but yet uh, Tesla failed. And to understand that, we need to understand longitudinal coherent wave mechanics. Now, I've prepared quite a slideshow for this. Uh, and let me see if I can make that work here. One moment to see if my slides are up. So, so we're talking now about understanding longitudinal EMF efficient energy distribution. That's essentially the issue. And uh, the, the, the project here is that um, longitudinal waves are the mechanism, not just of gravity wave, but life force itself. And it's kind of like the, the, the global DNA radio physics. And once we understand how uh, longitudinal waves propagate through what's called a fractal or conjugate wave array, that we see that's the key mechanism of superluminal faster than light and superconductive charge propagation. Um, the physics articles at, with the visuals and background for tonight's presentation are at fractalfield.com slash vacuum energy and fractalfield.com slash conjugate gravity. The negentropic plasma tech we'll be talking about longitudinal propagation is therify.net. Notably, uh, evidence that not only can we achieve remote healing action as Crystal was just describing so nicely uh, uh, with the longitudinal waves propagated from therify.net, but also we have documented evidence we can trigger lucid dreaming. And the reason we're able to do that with the longitudinal emissions of a broad spectral phase conjugate plasma is the subject of tonight's con conversation. How does action at a distance happen? And why is that the mechanism of all the spiritual magic stuff, including energy distribution without wires? So, um, we have a picture of Tesla's wireless power transmission using high voltage electrostatic coupling alone. And that's the point that when you see these pictures of Tesla putting the bulbs in the lawn and trying to achieve uh, wireless power, this is a high voltage electrostatic coupling, uh, but it is not actually longitudinal interferometry and therefore not capable of doing true power transmission at a distance efficiently which requires an understanding of how longitudinal waves incorrectly sometimes called scalar or torsional. So that's what we wanna to do tonight is we wanna understand that in simple terms and then see how that's not only a solution to power at a distance, literally a global power grid like the ancient pyramids did achieve, but also then the key to zero point energy technologies. And in fact, the concept of the diamond light body, even as it was talked about by the Essenes. So, so many secrets are revealed when we understand how longitudinal waves work and uh, including power at a distance and action at a distance in general. Remember that Einstein called action at a distance spooky specifically because he didn't understand longitudinal interferometry. And interestingly that um, now, uh, Bearden's equation has shown that the gravity waves propagate as longitudinal e EMF, in Bearden's book, Gravitobiology. And so we see that the same reason that Einstein did not understand action at a distance, called it spooky, because he didn't understand longitudinal interferometry, is also central to why he never figured out why an object falls to the ground. But first, uh, let's just look at where we're gonna be talking about Nikola Tesla this evening. Remember, we, I'm not saying that Tesla and Einstein were not geniuses, no, that contributions are huge, but there are some key mistakes. And those mistakes, unfortunately, have reverberated through our modern history in, in really quite dangerous ways. And so this is a summary of some of Tesla's mistakes. When he chose 60 cycle for electric motors, for example, and power grids, 
that's actually the opposite to life force because it turns out that 50 cycle is actually life force propagating because it's longitudinal propagating because it's a golden ratio precise exponent of Planck. For example, 50 Hertz will allow carbon nano to grow into fullerenes and 60 Hertz will not. Sorry, America. So, and it turns out 50 Hertz is one of the most documented healing frequencies in all the cancer literature. So if you don't understand the right frequencies, you can't phase conjugate, you can't implode, you can't propagate longitudinal and you can't do power without a distance. So in effect, by not using the right frequencies, Tesla failed to achieve power at a distance because he couldn't achieve implosive compression without the frequency recipe. So this, this is an introduction to the issues that we want to look at this evening. So basically, now I hope to only give a, a few minutes to this uh, very simple introduction to what is a longitudinal wave. But, and many of you heard me, have heard me talk about this too many times. Let's see if I remove really these are working here. Yeah, so this is, oh, well, there it is. It looks a little nervous, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a transverse wave. So remember that the electromagnetic waves travel just like sound waves and water waves, basically in two waves, in two ways. The wave can actually go up and down like this, where the motion of the wave is perpendicular to the motion of the propagation. That's called transverse. So for example, when you see a, a waves radiating from a, a pebble you drop in a pond, that's like a transverse wave going up and down like this. But it's not long, long distance efficient, it requires something else. It requires where the direction of the propagation of, of the wave is parallel or in line with the direction of the compression wave. And that's called a longitudinal wave. And the animation is on the bottom. For example, sound waves are predominantly longitudinal. So all waves essentially have both an up and down motion transverse and a compressional motion in the direction of propagation. But some of the inertia is up and down and some of this is longitudinal. Some is transverse and some is longitudinal. And that mix determines efficiency of propagation. And that's the point here. Now, to achieve real efficient propagation requires longitudinal, that compressional wave. The reason it was incorrectly called scalar or torsional was because when the cascade of frequencies imploded, that literally across scales, uh, then you achieve longitudinal. So for a while it's called scalar and even, even the Russians called it torsional simply because if you have a torsional, a spiral antenna, you can propagate longitudinal. But the correct word in physics is actually longitudinal EMF propagation. And let's give just the simplest example so people can sort of get their head around this, we hope. It, you know that the famous Age of Boxing Day tsunami, okay? So a tsunami wave. Now the tsunami, tsunami wave is traveling at about the speed of a jet plane, six to 700 miles an hour across the ocean. Now, when the boats a few hundred yards from shore did not know that the tsunami wave just went underneath them. Do you know why? Because <laughs> it's a longitudinal wave, compressional wave. It's not going up and down. But now when that longitudinal compressional wave that you call a tsunami approaches the, sc the shore, it's goes up a cone vortex, the, 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 the shape of the shoreline, and suddenly the compressional wave like this is converted into a, launch, into a vertical or transverse wave, and that's what does the damage. So actually the transverse wave contains heat, the, the longitudinal generally does not. Now, if you cross a longitudinal wave at a distance, and the, the cones reconverge, then they can resynthesize the transverse component and resynthesize heat containment at a distance. Now that's a simple but incredibly profound statement. If we understood the physics of why a longitudinal wave crossing at a distance, like the famous Russian woodpecker by Birkin, you could then understand how you can use longitudinal interferometry of microwave, for example, to do plasma heat containment the ultimate solution to all fusion physics research on this planet is heat containment. It's also how Ingo Swan heated that thermistor at a distance with his mind. Einstein would have called that spooky, but now we know exactly the longitudinal wave physics that allowed that heat containment at a distance. So this is kind of how longitudinal waves converge. When they, they converge at a distance, they cross. 
And when they cross, it's called introduction to four wave mixing and phase conjugate objects, all kinds of fun stuff. So this ability of the, this compressional wave to converge in build these cones and here's the cone that's built when they cross. This is called phase conjugation. So on the left, the transverse electromagnetic wave enters the perfected cone vortex, side view, golden ratio caduceus. And when that inertia that's going up and down starts going down that cone, you call it translation of vorticity. And the inertia, up and down inertia is translated into parallel inertia. It's squeezed out the tip of the toothpaste tube <laughs> at specifically the Planck threshold. So you multiply golden ratio times Planck, which is called the origin of biologic entropy, and you get the dimensions of that perfect cone, perfected phase conjugation, perfected implosion, perfected charge collapse. So when you go down the perfect vortex cone, literally caduceus, translation of vorticity, called making the L or phase shift, Elohim are those who can do this because they can propagate longitudinally. Sometimes that's called being 5D or the Kesjan body or the Ba from the top. A lot of names for this, but getting longitudinal coherent is the key because that's the light bubble that you take with you. And that's what we're we'll going to be introducing in the spiritual aspects of this. So on the left, the wave enters going up and down. On the right, having been squeezed down the perfect vortex, the wave emerges as a longitudinal wave and then can be efficiently distributed because it's under compression. Then you're going to see that this is literally, and I do mean literally, the required black hole implosion physics for successful death. How do you take memory into the collective unconscious, ancestral memory, the communion of saints? It's a longitudinal fractal array. Now, the reason that then propagating longitudinal wave must be distributed in an array, a fractal array. Uh, here's a little picture. I'll show more about this later. But basically, the dodeca ecosa fractal array is the only way longitudinal waves can propagate efficiently because dot, dot, dot. So in, in laser optics, uh, you, from the bottom right-hand picture here, if you, you make four lasers converge, actually two opposite, and then the other beams are perpendicular. This is called four wave mixing. And that's how you phase conjugate and make time reversal and megentropy in physics in the way phase conjugate optics. It's also the key to emerging from chaos because it, obviously the first time megentropy self-organization was measured in physics. But now what we're gonna to get to here is how two cones of the four wave mixing, let's see if the little, uh, oh, the animation, we have animation. So, so, so there's, look at, that's a four wave mixing opposing cones, but you see that how hex can embed in the pent there in the dodeca. Um, that's an animation I made about 30 years ago. I think I was pretending to be, pre pretending to be young. Then. But we, we want to talk about how the, the opposing vortex pairs go from hex tetracubic to a pent uh, geometry and why that difference is so important because the tetracubic hex geometry of, say, the, the Merkaba uh, must then rotate in bed in pent geometry, which is the nested dodeca. And it goes from octave cascades to golden ratio cascades. And that is the difference between a cold crystal hex and the imploding pent, imploding pent uh, the key to Merkaba and the key to translation of vorticity. But we'll talk more about that. It's actually also the key to why there are three pairs of primary colors. But we'll talk more about that. Because we, we might be able to explain, uh, if we get time, the physics of why color exists based on phase conjugation in optics. So here's just an example of how the phase conjugate beams of lasers four wave mix. And this will, uh, it requires this perpendicular arrival of these vortex cones. Remember, this is the same vortex that's allowing the transverse wave to be converted to a longitudinal at that critical Planck threshold toothpaste, toothpaste tube center. And this will then introduce later why Every indigenous people calls this the sacred four directions. So phase conjugation starts with a cubic lattice, but the magic in the phase conjugate mirror, remember uh, 
how Nostradamus coated his scrying cup for seeing the future, so his conjugate mirror. How did the Olmec talk to their ancestors in an obsidian black mirror, phase conjugate mirror? How did John Dee speak with the angels by the perfected scrying? The showstone was a phase conjugate mirror. So to understand the phase conjugate mirror and communication with ancestors is to introduce the physics of longitudinal interferometry. And this is the point we're making that the DNA radio that allows the ancestral propagation, the communion of saints, uh, the um, astral, the, uh, what do they call it? The uh, Akashic records, thank you. <laughs> uh, I visited the Akashic records when I was in Boulder. <laughs> That's another story. So uh, this ability of this interferometry is the key to spiritual conversations and the key to energy without wires if we understood longitudinal interferometry and the key to power at a distance. So once we understand how longitudinal waves propagate, we have the key to a lot of very important things, propulsion, energy, ancestral memory, surviving death, power at a distance. You know, let's get this longitudinal interferometry figured out and maybe we can graduate from the stone ages here on planet earth. <laughs> so um, the essence of the phase conjugate mirror that physics does not understand is why when the lasers meet in the super high dielectric barium strontium titanate called a phase conjugate mirror, how Nostradamus achieved his little trick there, is to understand what is happening in the super high dielectric barium strontium titanate material, the, the magic stuff of the phase conjugate mirror. <laughs> and, uh, and that is a charge distribution permissive environment where the hex turns to pent. So we're gonna talk more about that, but just to get the little flavor of that, if you take the, the tetra cube of the flower of life here, and there's a tetra cube, there's the flower of life. We have movies for this. So the star tetra is the two vortex spinning, obviously. And um, the, the, each vortex contains this cascade down the cone. This is the cascade of golden ratio caduceus. And what that does then, and that embeds, embeds first in a pent dodec. But then, if you see in this film, so here is the classic mercury of visualization, the star tetra. Wait, let's play that again. I went a little fast. So that, that star tetra there is rotating. You're visualizing this tetra cube around your body. But if you notice on the right, there's a moment when you see a hex view in that quartz dodeca and then a pent view. So that bottom right, see that visual? There's the hex view and there's the pent view. You see a cube in a dodeca. And the distance, that gap from that hex to that pent view is exactly that 32 degree tilt, which is how you tilt a cube and then spin it and blink five times and you have a pent dodeca of five cubes as depicted here, which is the 32 degree tilt angle of the chin of the sphinx for a very important reason, that you're actually visualizing the hex tetra cube of your Merkin visualization suddenly imploding and embedding in a pin. So that the geometry went from hex to pin. And the hex geometry had all octave ratios, which we later see are maximum destructive interference, which are perfect for charge stasis and not permitting implosion snow crystals are hex, versus the pent, which creates only golden ratio, the, the, the deca vertex stellations are all golden ratio, as in the star mother model. <laughs> and, and that dodeca ecosa has all golden ratio relations, and golden ratio is the solution to constructive wave interference, and therefore implosion, and therefore compression, and therefore making longitudinal waves. So this is later gonna help us understand superconductivity and propagation of longitudinal waves in the vacuum. But before we finish that thought, just to again, make the connection to the spiritual dimension here. So when the Essenes said the whole secret of spirituality is the diamond light body. And now we know by measurement that the longitudinal waves of therify.net plasma trigger lucid dreaming 
And we know that lucid dreaming is probably the best predictor of who will take memory through death. And as we'll see, who has a coherent longitudinal bubble of charge around their body. That's the ka from the ba from the ka of the Merkaba. That is the Tibetan rainbow light body. That is what you take with you when you die. And that is an introduction to the physics of why it's been measured that when Tibetan saints die, you have rainbows. It's because they introduce that implosive compression of charge, which is the contribution of mind to environment. So um, we'll look a little bit at the physics of rainbows in a moment. So you see that the rainbow light body, the kaf and the ba, all these discussions of, of the uh, song lines and dreaming tracks are all introductions to how the human evolution of consciousness, literally those who have a soul are those who have a coherent longitudinal bubble of charge around their aura. So the Essenes, you could spend 20 lifetimes studying the personalities and the histories of all these spiritual mo movements, or you could spend a few hours learning the physics, and I do mean the physics of acquiring longitudinal coherence and discover the true science of what is, it is to have a spiritual body, a coherent bubble of charge through which you take memory through death and you lucid dream, you astral project, you remote view. We're going to document the physics, and I do mean the physics of how that works in brain waves in a moment when we show you how we teach young people to see without their eyes. That vision is literally a vortex of plasma which explains perfectly why you can take your vision out of your body. All of these scientists who are like, I don't mean to laugh at anybody here, but I think it's hilarious. Gary Schwartz has these gatherings of, of scientists studying the physics of consciousness every year. And not one of them has even begun to address the simple fact that millions have documented you can take your vision out of your body whether you call it astral travel, remote viewing, plasma projective, or near-death experience, <laughs> surgeons are coming back and documenting that they can take their, their vision outside their body. Well, now we know exactly, exactly the physics of what it is you're taking out of your body when your eyeball leaves your head. And we're going to show you that physics. It's a plasma vortex. And the center, the throat of that plasma vortex, when properly tuned to Planck, imploding is the physics of vision. And we measure that in brainwave and that'll be the next slide here one moment. But first I want to explain the reason that phase conjugation is the only reason that color and rainbows exist. First, you need to understand that phase conjugation is the only reason that photosynthesis exists. So here is the proof. This is, we call it a smoking gun that the only two frequencies, colors, that make photosynthesis happen are very narrow bandwidth in purple and orange, which just turn out to be, this is my discovery among many, exact golden ratio exponents of Planck. That's called phase conjugate charge collapse. That is the reason photosynthesis exists and the reason it's negentropic. And that is an introduction to the more sophisticated conversation to understand that phase conjugation to Planck is also the reason that color exists. And I'm not going to make that argument at great length tonight, but you can read the whole story at fractalfield.com slash fractal photosynthesis. Basically, if you convert to angular measure, wait, here's my, here's, okay, here's my torus donut. The photon is traveling as a torus. It's obvious because every wave travels as a torus. If you measure the tilt angle phase of that torus, with respect to the octave of wavelength called visible light from 700 to 350 nanometers, ultra red to red, and you convert that to angular measure, you have a simple zero to 180 degree tilt of the photon donut. Okay, cool. And so what we call the primary colors are the angles of 45, 90, 135 sounds all very tetracubic. 45 degrees is orange, 90 degrees is green. The reason negative green, they call it, it's literally fatal. Every living plant spits out the green photon because it's opposite to conjugate. That's why green is poisonous and no plant can swallow the green photon. <laughs> you didn't know why every plant was green. Now you do. See here, this arrow 
Green is the opposite of photosynthesis because it's opposite to phase conjugate. So all of the primary colors are, are tetracubic except two. What's this 63 and 117 degree tilt here? Called yellow and the physics of blue. Yellow and blue are 63 and 117 degree tilt angles of the photon. Obviously what we're calling color is simply the phase angle at which the photon torus impinges on the cone of the eye. In fact, the fact that color is only perceived in a cone is proof that color is the tilt phase angle of the photon because as antenna physics, you can only use a cone to do one thing, measure the tilt or phase angle of the incoming torus wave donut. So it turns out that yellow and blue, 63 and 117 degrees, you know what those angles are? That is the 63 and 117 degrees is the inside and outside face angle of a dodecahedron. I repeat, the, the 63, 170 degree tilt that we call yellow and blue are simply the tilt angle of the photon. That's the inside and outside face angle of a dodecahedron. Yes, what yes. Is, pardon? What, what that is proof of is the fact that color is caused, and I mean caused, by phase conjugation at the Planck threshold. That's the reason color exists, and that's the reason dying great Tibetans cause rainbows to happen. It's also the physics of the green flash and all kinds of other fun stuff. But So next, I, I want to play a short little clip here. This is a, a young saint. Her name is Vindur in Netherlands. And Vindor here is seeing without her eyes, as do hundreds of young people. And we're measuring her brain waves. We're measuring the frequency cascade from alpha to gamma. And it's widely known that when the, the you're going to see this alpha peak is in green here. So when she goes into a trance bliss state and can see without her eyes, you get it. You get an alpha peak in green. And then in a moment, let's see where she's going to begin to. So she, she, she can see the colors. She can play Rubik's cubes. She can do all this stuff blindfolded. She can see very clearly without her eyes. And this is her wonderful teacher, Iris, here. And um, little Vindor has said that she's going to dedicate her life to teaching kids to be able to see without their eyes. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can see a difference if you focus on specific. Okay, so the point is that when Vindur and all of these young people begin to see without their eyes, they go into a trance or bliss state. And uh, actually the trick is to imagine yourself in beautiful nature and your body implodes and you enter bliss and become charged with radiant alpha, perfect coherence. Originally, Karakov measured those who could see without their eyes. He said it was golden ratio between alpha and beta and beta. But now we know it goes way beyond that. It goes up to gamma, and it's a golden ratio and an octave cascade. It's beautiful work. Anyway, at that moment, every single one of those young people says the same thing. They say, oh, inside my head, a tunnel, a vortex tube appeared, and I looked down through that little tunnel, and that's how I see without my eyes. Every single young person said the same thing. And you know what's really cool is Patrick Botti, who did all our programming for this software, flameinmind.com. It's a wonderful bring yourself, best in the world for teaching bliss and most psychoactive binaural bliss, the flameinmind.com campus. So Patrick is up there in Hampshire with, and he's sitting next to Vindur, the little girl here who is clearly a saint. And she's teaching him how to do this. Normally, older people, they don't get it so good. <laughs> and suddenly, because of the sympathetic moment with this young, magic young person, Patrick said something kind of like cracked inside his head. And suddenly, he began to see shadows through a tunnel in his own head, even when blindfolded. So suddenly Patrick began to see without his, his eyes. So we know exactly, exactly, exactly what the physics of vision is. Gary Schwartz and the physics of consciousness people around the planet, eat your heart out. Sorry, we already figured it out. It's a plasma donut. 
And the golden ratio cascade in your brain waves squeezes the vortex of the plasma vortex inside your head. And you look down through that and I see a little tube right here. And that's exactly why you can take your vision outside your head because that blows like a smoke ring and you can take it with you. So now we know exactly the physics of why Bill Tiller measured focused human attention causes electric fields to compress. Eat your heart out of all the other physics consciousness teachers because we're the first one to answer the question. Focused attention causes electric fields to compress because of that squeezing plasma donut. So vision is a squeezing plasma donut and you can take it with you when you die or when you lose a dream. When you astral travel, when you remote view, we know how it's built, we know how it travels, we know where it goes, and we know you can use it better on the longitudinal array, the subject of the rest of this talk. So here is how a plasma donut is shot from your body. This is a ghost leaving the body at death. Notice that this is more possible in the trees, and this is much less possible in the electrosmog hell that you call a hospital because the plasma toroid that you call your spirit or your soul requires a longitudinal fractal array, ancestral membrane, in which to propagate. So if you want to blow your donuts properly, you need to understand a little bit of longitudinal physics. So we're going to be talking about how that plasma donut, the squeezed physics of vision propagates. And this is how it propagates. Here is the well-documented geometry of every major sacred site on the planet, the pyramid array. The ancients who built the pyramids obviously understood longitudinal interferometry. Nikola Tesla did not. This is longitudinal interferometry. This is a dodeca ecosa fractal array. And the reason is because the wave interference physics is that constructive wave interference requires pent golden ratio, otherwise known as dodeca ecosa. And those are the compression nodes. Those are the nodes where Bruce Cathy measured reduced nuclear critical mass. I'm the first one to explain the physics of why. Those are the nodes where Cozy Rev proved you measure increased magnetic flux density of earth magnetic grid line crosses the only place you can put a Cozy Rev mirror if you want military quality, tele quality telepathy. So this longitudinal array is the, inter the introduction to the physics of global power distribution without wires. And the pyramid builders knew and Tesla did not. And this also requires something about the physics of gravity waves, which we'll get into. So the reason every living protein is pent dodeca and thus golden ratio has to do with the same physics of charge propagation. They start with the radii of hydrogen, which we newly know, thanks to my new equation, that the radii of hydrogen are golden ratio to Planck. And that is the center of every DNA ladder rung bond where the longitudinal array begins of the DNA radio of the collective unconscious. So you ratchet that dodecahedron to that charge implosion and out that squirt gun at the center of that DNA ladder rung. When you have the harmonic cascade of golden ratio brain waves and golden ratio EKG, the phonon geometry braid within the braid implodes DNA, becomes a toroid, Lord of the Ring, and you have the beginning of bliss. The plot thickens, as it were. So to understand why longitudinal waves only share distributed information at the nodes is to understand why only fractal array, array distribution allows distribution of consciousness, not just distribution of power, but distribution of consciousness. It's the same physics of perfected fractal charge distribution. So at the compression nodes, you see the longitudinal wave enters a set of vortex cones again, just like the one I showed you with the caduceus down that cone. And there's an exchange of inertia from longitudinal, which is pretty transparent, goes through a Faraday cage, no problem, and the transverse, which can be heat containing. So that exchange of inertia from transverse to longitudinal, what people call, you know, from your spirit body to your physical body, that's schizophrenia. And the physics is the difference between 
longitudinal coherence and transverse coherence. And that interchange of inertia is possible only at the sacred nodes, which is earth, grid, dodeca, and icosa, fractal, longitudinal array, the only place where it is possible to have a successful labyrinth, earth, death, cathedral, cozy rev mirror, uh, uh, efficient nuclear reaction, and uh, global distribution of power without wires. It's all the same physics. It's longitudinal interferometry. So not only is DNA earth grid zodiac in every, every living protein, pentodeca, but is now proven that the arrangement of masses in the universe is pentodeca for this same reason. It is the only way to stabilize gravity. And it's the reason that Planck is the same a thousand light years in every direction because Planck is the DNA radio and the hydrogen radio that begins longitudinal interferometry, which is charged distribution efficiency in the universe. And the stillness of the nodes in that array works like a pendulum. And I'm gonna explain that in another slide. There's a slide here I'm missing here just for a moment. But first, before I do, I wanna say two more things about this slide. On the right, we have my friend, Greg Hodewanek and Bill Ramsey, who proved with a 25 cent capacitor, completely replacing the billion dollar LIGO array and, the, and, and Weber's multi-million dollar gravity detector. He picks up these gravity waves with 25 cent capacitor because he learned how to pick up a longitudinal array and multiple times documented that the shock wave front of a major star explosion nova arrived faster than light at Earth literally the only physics of gravity waves, longitudinal interferometry. And later we'll see Tom Bearden's slide proving that gravity waves are longitudinal EMF. And that's why they're faster than light. And now the smoking gun proof that my theory of the cause of gravity is fractality, the only ratio phase conjugation to Planck, is right, is right here. Professor Raymond Chow famously, after thousands and thousands of measurements of phase velocities faster than light concludes all his measurements of faster than light velocities are between 1.5 and 1.7 times C, the speed of light. Guess what's right in the middle there? 1.618 golden mean ratio. When it improves, when it is proven that the most predominant measured velocities faster than light are golden ratio times the speed of light, no one will be able to deny my fractal golden ratio times Planck theory of gravity because that's how gravity is stabilized and how it is built. I'm, I'm gonna get to the next slide about propagation in a moment. But first, just to understand, this is the physics of non-destructive charge collapse. You nest the platonic solid. So you take this picture of the geometry of the electron shells that make the atomic table, and this picture of the geometry of the electron, of the arrangements of the hadrons of the protons and hadrons of the nucleus. So the nucleus of the atomic table is tetracube cosa dodeca, and the electron shells, SPDF subshell, S is one vortex pair torus, pi suborbital is three vortex pair, six electrons tetracubic, D and F suborbitals are 10, 14 electron, five, seven vortex pair, E cosa dodeca. So the electron shell physics of the whole atomic table is this simple platonic nest of charge collapse. And the nuclear geometries of the entire atomic table is the same simple nest of the platonic solids. And the name for that is non-destructive charge collapse, implosion enabled by golden ratio, which is also the reason gravity exists. And if you take this spinning dodeca here, oh, we have to even have it animated. This is my star mother kit, golden mean dot info slash kit. It's the most popular zone tool on the planet right now. Every single vertex in that only possible three-dimensional fractal is a simple golden ratio exponent. So X, Y, and Z coordinate of every vertex there is simple, simply a multiple golden ratio. That's it. And then after that, I newly proved that if you multiply golden ratio times Planck, you get those nodal arrays are exactly the radii of hydrogen. So fractality is the reason hydrogen makes gravity. We have another slide on that. I'll show you the physics 
publications of our new equations we published on that in a moment. But there's something else I want to explain first. You see, the reason the fractal array works, there's a subtitle for this conversation. It's called the epilogue from 2001 when Dave said of the monolith dolmen. He said, there's thousands of them in here, Dave. And then in 2010, he emerges and he can appear in anybody's TV set he wanted. That was called fractal efficient charge distribution. But the, the reason that array is the only physics of mindfulness. Remember, you already in, in, inhabit an array that's called the synapses of your brain. However, to inhabit a bigger array, which is the, the plasma domain of longitudinal interferometry fractality outside your body, otherwise known as sacred space, you need to understand the longitudinal physics of how arrays work. And that's what this slide's about. So, when those wave nodes of the dodeca ecosa called hydrogen, DNA, earth grid, zodiac, and universe, they're all pentadodeca, and they're all stable. They're all still points. The still point and zero point are very similar in meaning here. Um, the nature of that array is just for distribution of inertia is just like this picture here, if you can see my cursor, of the, the, the billiard balls on a swing. So if these balls here are touching each other, then when I drop one ball here, a billion balls down the row, one ball pops off instantly. That's called efficient distribution. Now, however, if those balls were to be separated by a, million, by a millimeter, then if I drop one ball here, it could take forever for the other ball at the other end, a billion balls down the row to pop off the end. So it's the fact that they're perfectly touching each other in stillness that allows efficient distribution. It's like a perfected fractal crystal array. Now to get into that distribution array by being squeezed to implosive Propulsion through the threshold of Planck is the physics, and I do mean physics, of successful death. We'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. But basically, you're ending with that's what the why going down the Dodeki Kosa Earth Grid, the, the Aboriginals called the dream line and song track, the physics of ancestral memory, because you needed to understand that array. So, this, this actually, these slides are not in quite perfect order here. This is where we did the original software emulation proving that octave ratio on the right here create maximum destructive wave interference and golden ratio center here is maximum constructive wave interference that is the only possible solution to compression and that is the solution to every problem humanity has is the solution to compression the solution to computers the solution to alchemy the solution to urban design the solution to death the solution to every problem you can think of is the solution to compression. The solution to energy, the solution to zero point. If you know the solution to compression, you have the answer to every single problem that humanity have ever known about. The solution to awareness, the solution to God, the solution to the divine, the solution to alchemy. It's all about the solution to compression. Yes! Uh, so that, that implosion is otherwise known as non-destructive charge collapse or alchemy. Alchem simply means access to a black hole. Sorry about that, I have a, too many gadgets here. One moment. Um, so the animation here is just to show, if you take a tetracubic lattice here, let's see if I will, yeah, I'll get that's gonna play. So a tetracubic lattice creates, is all octave harmonics and therefore uh, destructive interference, perfect for stabilizing and crystallizing, but the opposite of efficient distribution. Whereas dodeca, harmonics are all golden ratio exponents and therefore perfected implosion and therefore perfected distribution. So the octave in some ways is actually a uh, charge isolating uh, versus the golden ratio is charge imploding. And this you see the golden ratio is a cascade. This is an old slide. You see any two numbers, the golden ratio can add and multiply forever. 
then you get the following number, whether you add two or whether you multiply 1.618. So 1.618 squared is 2.618 Sarah. So, and so that's the cone of implosion. And this is just a simplified top-down view. So now you can tell your child, unlike what Einstein, Stephen Hawking, or NASA, NASA cannot do, tell their child why an object falls to the ground. You can now look at the slide and you can tell your child why an object falls to the ground. My new equation proved this is the top-down view of hydrogen. I have proof. This is not subjective. And you see these waves nice. there. They're adding and multiplying phase velocity recursively, constructively, which only Golden Ratio allows. And when that does, the phase velocity heterodynes add and multiply, turning compression into acceleration of charge towards center named the gravity. Obviously, as Einstein proved, it's impossible to discriminate acceleration of charge from gravity because acceleration of charge is gravity. And the reason charge accelerates towards center is because of Golden Ratio. That's how fractality causes gravity. Many physicists already agree that fractality causes gravity. I'm the first one to explain how fractality causes gravity. So these are our published physics paper in the physics literature with our new equations proving how fractality causes gravity. On the right, we use the Klein-Gordon generalized wave equations to prove that Golan ratio is the only solution to perfected constructive wave interference and therefore perfected compression and therefore implosion and therefore the origin of megatropy and there, therefore the only reason gravity exists. And this is our other part of the left, compression is a hydrogen atom and phase kind of, it's a lot of stuff, but all these are at fractalfield.com slash vacuum energy, which is the talk I did for the breakthrough energy movement. And here you see that the model of my new equation for the radiative hydrogen here. And this is the smoking gun here. So th this is the publications we have in the existing physics literature. And you can see all this at fractalfield.com slash vacuum energy or slash conjugate gravity. So this is the generalized time golden wave equations approved golden ratio is a solution constructed with interference, et cetera. So I'm not going to go into detailed wave mechanics, but we have published the equations proving how hydrogen is fractal and why that phase conjugation enables the compression named the gravity and also then indirectly proving the origin of neg entropy, which we'll get into in a moment. So getting, yeah. getting back more to the title of this talk, which was how a pyramid is proven mm -hmm. to be a solution to global power without wires. And here I'm referring to the book Two thirds by David Myers and David Percy, wherein the pyramid by the Arcturians was called the Hummer. Now we know from more history, galactic history, from both the Pleiadians and the Andromedans, with whom I've had personal relationships, especially the Andromedans, uh, that the, the, the pyramids were a successful global power distribution without wires network installed by a series of civilizations, many of whom are today represented in what's called the Federation of Planets, who recently booted out the Pleiadians for reasons we'll get into today. Anyway, the reason this pyramid was called the Hummer is instructive and, and we need to understand that uh, to understand global distribution of power without wires from a pyramid. So here is, well, the reason we, we showed the, the spins here, I, I guess we should show this slide first. So here, if you, here I'm taking this rotating gyroscope I don't know if I can make it spin fast enough here. So if I get this gyroscope to nutate precess in phase, it will radically speed up. And that translates vorticity from the nutation to rotation. And that, that's called a pump wave. And so that phase relationship between the rotation rate of the planet and the rotation rate of the nutating galaxy is the stabilization of gravity, the cascade from the long wave to the short wave imploding, gravity stabilizing. And this has to do with why you needed to tune the spin rate of planets to better embed zodiacal spin to stabilize atmosphere on planets. This is this thesis of the detailed book, two thirds by David Myers and David Person. Now, that phase relationship we animated here and we animate it here. So the nutation precession rate has to be in phase to enable that cascade from the long wave to the short wave to be implosive. And that's called stable gravity and relates directly to how to stabilize atmosphere on planets because it's tricky. You get too much gravity, you, you 
you can't have life, but you get atmosphere. You get too little gravity, you get a little life, but you no atmosphere. And that tightrope, the solution to that tightrope is the problem that planet taming solves. And that's what the ancients called this process of planting these dodeca, these pyramids at the tetrahedral latitudes for stabilizing planetary spin rates to better embed zodiacal spins for gravity maintenance and atmosphere maintenance. Now, I'm going a little fast here because I don't have a choice in order to do this within our time limits, but I want to give you a little understanding of how that pyramid is acquiring and distributing a global energy power distribution. Here is, and why it's called a Hummer. So here is our spectrum analysis of many sites on the planet from our world leading life force measurement technology, flameinmind.com slash life force. And what we're doing is spectrum analyzing a microvolt. And we can measure very replicably whether or not your building will cause a seed or a child to grow, enabling you can de to decide whether to pay your architect. Goldenmean.info slash architecture. We display three ways to measure life force in buildings. So steel and aluminum buildings kill the soul of your children and your seeds. It's measurable. And you should not send your child to a metal school building for that reason, actually. So our life force architecture curriculum, the best biological architecture curriculum on the planet is based on three forms of measurement. And this is one of them, flameinmind.com slash life force. So we take a brainwave spectrum analyzer and we measure the life force. We can measure whether a tree is gonna live or die by predicting in advance, whether it gets the Schumann harmonics of the same tech. Well, here we're measuring the life force in the cows in a field in the center in a, a, a Biolog actually, this is a bamboo dome built by our biology architecture center in Bali. Thank you to Juan Schlosser. And on right, and by the way, that bamboo dome will cause a seed to grow. Your steel and aluminum building will kill a seed. Which do you want to live in? It's called dielectric constant, implosive capacitance, charge distribution efficiency, biological architecture. But the point is, on the, on the right here, you have the Visico Bos Bosnian pyramid. Now, what I want you to notice is in every single case, we have a strong harmonic component natural to the earth at 53 cycles per second, in addition to a Schumann cascade and the normal Schumann harmonics, which we depict here. Now, I was the first one to prove why the Schumann harmonics, what they are. These are the Schumann harmonics in blue, 2.78, 4.5, 7.29, 11.8, and 19. Actually, and they go up to 50, by the way, 53. <laughs> and this in green on the bottom is my equation for the origin of neg entropy, golden ratio times Planck, 3, 7.83, 14.3, and 20.8. The point is that the difference between the natural Schumann harmonic, uh, actually, I'm sorry, the frequencies on top in blue are my equation. The frequencies in bottom in green are the measured Schumann harmonics. And Schumann harmonics are not increasing in frequency, they're increasing in harmonic inclusiveness, which is how you measure evolution, by the way. And uh, the, the difference between the theoretical Schumann, which should be 7.29 hertz, and 7.83, if you continue by multiplying by exactly the ratio of Planck, you get the difference between 50 and 53 hertz exactly. Hello. So why were you measuring 53 Hertz in all these pyramids? Are you beginning to get an idea of what the Hummer is doing? It's piezoelectrically phase and training the Schumann harmonic implosive phase conjugate cascade for the neg entropy of the reason Bia, Gaia is self-organizing. And that Hummer is piezoelectrically embedding the implosive Schumann capacitance of the earth, like a ringing cavity. Remember the Schumann is originally tuned to the evenly dividing the circumference by the speed of light and you get around eight hertz. So retuning the planet. Now there's a whole other conversation here, which is too complicated for today's, but just a little background here. Remember that when the planet Federation of Planets chased the Draco, Enki's family to earth and tried to imprison them in a quarantine by the nuclear generators in the hollow metal synthetic moon built by the Andromedans, the key frequency was 50 hertz. Now, what was the frequency fence quarantine about to try to keep the Dracos in here? By the way, they failed. It was to prevent the stargates from working because that's how they're getting in. And how did the stargates work? The same implosive cascade, but you need to know what a portal is and that's more advanced in today's conversation. But 
I'm just giving you a little background here to how the ancients built those pyramids, the piezoelectric resonators named the Hummer to propagate that implosive harmonic cascade around the dodeca Ecosa earth grid named longitudinal interferometry. That is power distribution without wires. And Tesla, sorry. So this is, I'm just giving the background. This is Tom Bearden's book and you have the equations proving how gravity waves are longitudinal waves. And why is that called gravitobiology? Remember, Bearden was teaching talking about, along with my friend Chris Burr at the time, about priori physics before I studied priori and figured out what priori was missing, was phase conjugation of Planck and discovered what its frequencies were. And that's when I built Therify.net, which is now in 25 countries doing rejuvenation and egg entry. So Bearden had a lot of things right, okay? So I just wanna explain one part of this, why a longitudinal EMF is life force. Next slide. The role of longitudinal and centripetal EMF in plant growth is a major clue here. Remember longitudinal interferometry was the only clue to telepathy and the earth grid and all the fun stuff. But here, now the famous experiment, you take a copper plate on the roof, picking up the longitudinal component of sunlight, put a wire into a pitch black basement, hook it to another copper plate, and the plants grow fine, just like there was sunlight in the basement. You know why? Because it's the longitudinal EMF from the sun that, that really makes the plant go grow more than the light. <laughs> now, to document that, I would like to refer to Dave, who runs our one of our hundreds of Therify.net centers in Nashville, Tennessee, who confirmed the flower shop across the street doubled the life of their cut flowers exposed to longitudinal Therify plasma. Hello. <laughs> so why is longitudinal information? Well, you understand why it, remember a seed will not grow unless it really sucks. So, you know, it can't suck in that first, first nutrient unless it's implosive. That's why charging seeds with Therify is so powerful that the lead biodyna biodynamic scientists of France just bought a Therify system, like 25,000 bucks, just for charging seeds. The reason Stonehenge was actually built was to charge the seeds. One of the biggest reasons pyramids were built was to charge the seeds. Double to triple the plant growth when you charge the seeds with longitudinal before they germinate. Well, this is the physics. It's a centripetal force. And that's why it's called gravitobiology because life force is defined by becoming centripetal life. Next slide. So the primary reason for global when we talk about global warming, the actual physics is that the dodeca ecosa nature of the earth grid is the difference between heat and cooling. For example, uh, Victor Schauberger's famous piezo water vortex spontaneously got cold just before it made voltage from gravity. It works so good, Hitler wrote him a check. Now, the reason the same tube of the vortex on our plasma Therify will spontaneously get cold. That's called the origin of negentropy, the title of my book, fractalfield.com. So the, the spontaneously getting cold is proof of negentropy, obviously the opposite. And when your physics teacher tells you the universe is condemned to entropy, you tell them they're lying. Don't tell my children that. There is a way out of chaos. It's called the origin of negentropy. So applying that to global warming, it's, it's instructive to understand why they said when the rapture comes, the guns will melt. Uh, the guns have the wrong dielectric constant, so they can't do implosive charge compression. So they generate heat because their molecular structure is not fractal. So everything that invites compression invites life and does not heat. Everything that fails to be fractal generates heat. And you will be the left behind when the rapture comes. The rapture is actually the longitudinal node of aligned planetary spins. And inviting centripetal force is the difference between life and death, literally, and the difference between heat and cooling. So whatever the question is, the answer is always perfect. Compression, history of alchemy, history of urban design, history of how to die. Perfecting compression is the perfect vortex, even how the Vimana Nazi Bell Hanabu flew. 
So actually, the Vimana Nazi bell here, this is not only would allow you to understand why objects fall to the ground, but to understand why the Nazis won the war, took over the South Pole, and now control a major base on Mars and Ceres that outside of Jupiter. The, the, the Nazis have spread that disease of Nazism because your Western scientists were too embarrassed to admit they didn't know why an object falls to the ground. They didn't know why a vortex makes gravity. If you understand why a vortex makes gravity, you do not need to be part of that slavery. And the Nazis are still propagating that slavery today because you can know how to make centripetal force. And then you are not pushed around. So in the top part here, you have a dual cylinder spin making a vortex of iron powder doped red mercury. And the perfect vortex is a gravity maker, something called impulse power in Star Trek. That's how the Vimana Nazi Belhanvi flew. And it's also even some how the Pleiadians make some of their force today, some of their propulsion technologies. So to understand how to make a perfect vortex and how to make gravity from the vacuum, how to make charge implosion, is the difference between being a slave and being not a slave. Literally, how not to be pushed around, which means you can steer the tornado. So if you know how to make the centripetal force at the center of the vortex, literally how to make the perfect vortex, which is the exact same physics of how that child Vindur learned how to see without her eyes. It is the same physics of the same perfect vortex of plasma. That is the implosion that's gravity making. And that's a little bit of a heavy idea. So the symptoms of Einstein induced insanity, A, not having a clue why objects fall to the ground. Answer, perfected charge, fractal, charge distribution, perfected fractal charge compressions, golden ratio, recursive, constructive, heterodyne, and phase velocities, producing the acceleration of charge towards symmetry center, named the gravity. Now you, unlike Einstein, know why object falls to the ground. Two, thinking the speed of light is a speed limit. This is part of the insanity. Velocities faster than life are routinely measured, centering rather accurately around golden ratio, proof of the conscious cost of Three, thinking it takes infinite energy to go through the speed of light. Wrong. This mistake reflects ignorance of how longitudinal waves accelerate smoothly through light speed by golden ratio conjugate, conjugation must be precisely tuned golden ratio times Planck. Four. Thinking all action at a distance is spooky. Again, Einstein induced insanity because you don't understand how longitudinal waves cross at a distance we just discussed. Five, not having a clue what the ether is made of. It is a compressible superfluid whose compression and rarefaction is charge, plus and minus charge. This mistake reflects the schizophrenia rampant without a real fractal unified field science. Somehow ridiculously believing gravity and electromagnetism were made of a different substance. Those who believe that gravity and electromagnetism are made of a different substance, substance, I believe should be hospitalized for schizophrenia. Five, incorrectly and weirdly believing space-time is somehow bent, wrong. Instead of clearly understanding precisely what is bent by gravity, which is charge acceleration, is the compressible charge wave front trajectory. That's all that matrix is. And that is based on the final huge misunderstanding of Einstein-induced insanity, not understanding that both mass and time are both created and defined simply and only by the inertia and period of rotating charge. So charge rotates, we call that inertia mass. Charge rotates, we call that period time. That is the only origin and definition of time, period. So for example, the reason clock speeds speed up in the presence of acceleration is very simple. It's acceleration of spin rate, which is the only definition of time. At, at a conclusion of this talk, I was just gonna talk about the energy tech of tomorrow that when we grow up as a planet and stop driving around in cars powered by dinosaurs farting, um, the solution will be called rotating conjugators. Remember, if you know how to use 50 cycle, and 60 cycle will not do to grow carbon to be a fullerene. Here's a picture of the fullerenes. Now, if you can do that pure enough, which we can, 99% pure, thousands of tons a month. That's our carbon nano group. Um, so those rotating conjugators 
are such energy and propulsion sources. It literally makes every other energy and propulsion on this planet, the stone ages. And it's an introduction to stargates, but that's an advanced curriculum that's beyond the subject of this talk. Now I'm gonna stop my screen share. No, I'm not just, okay. So a bit of, yeah, I see that it's past an hour. Just a, a, a concluding thought here. Have we done what we set out to do? We've showed how you can have global energy distribution without wires if you understand longitudinal interferometry. We have showed that that same implosive charge attraction, what we've only barely introduced, is the key to every single zero point vacuum coherence energy technology that's ever existed. And finally, we've showed that ability to phase conjugate implode charge in your aura is the only way to get the longitudinal charge coherent bubble, which is the only way through death and the solution to what the Essenes called the diamond light body, what the Egyptians called the Baal the Ka, what Gurdjieff called the Kezjan body, and what other woo-woos call going to the fifth dimension. It is simply the coherence of that plasma bubble, the same physics of why that child could see without her eyes through that vortex tube. So, end the presentation, ready for questions. Wow, Dan, <laughs> wow, what such an interesting presentation, Dan. You certainly had shown us such uh, profound discoveries that you have, which are certainly breakthroughs explaining so clearly about how we can see with the uh, without the eyes with um, with the vision outside of the body and how the body passes on and uh, oh it's really really amazing it's, it's fantastic thank you so much and uh, I think uh, thank you so much Dan I, I will pass the microphone over to the, the co-chair Dr. Fress Rezel Thank you, Crystal. <clears throat> uh, the one thing that I found really interesting, you notice my hair is all a must now. That's because you're, you're messing with my head, Dan, and I really, you know, I really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> practical application of the science. You talked about the two copper plates with a copper wire between them. The, is there a ratio between the size of the copper plates and the length of the wire for optimal plant growth in the dark? You know, I haven't studied those experiments for many years, but I can tell you by equation that um, if the standing wave of capacitance, but in, I, on, on that copper plate were uh, phase coherent, uh, that the uh, resonance would be more efficient. And now I have equations to to define how to do that, golden ratio times Planck, for example. And I would take the spectrum analysis of the resonance of the voltage built up on that plate to prove whether or not the propagating longitudinal wave going down to the basement was optimized, similar to what we do with therified. Energy. So I, I would say we have the equations to do that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a low frequency cascade that indicates longitudinal wave. But actually, I believe most of the original experiments where they were successful in growing the plants in the basement, they just took a haphazard chunk of copper plate and a haphazard chunk of wire, and it mostly worked. It mostly worked. Yep. Uh, there was one question is, when did you start your biofeedback equipment manufacturing or design? Has this been 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago? It's, it's too many, it might make me sound old, but I, you know, graduate psychophysiology, I built a polygraph in graduate school and that's uh, actually uh, about 40, 40, 45 years ago now. So, so I was yeah. doing biofeedback and, and I had the privilege of working with those who invented biofeedback, Albert Axe, Alma Green, these are all friends of mine. Uh, and further, I would say, just back to your last question, that our uh, longitudinal technology implosion technology has been commercialized. The imploder.com water imploders are working around the planet. Flameandmind.com implosion technology and brain was working around the planet. Therified that working around. So we have been successful in all these major areas. We're doing wonderful, but we haven't hardly started. We're just getting energy and propulsion. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, let's see. The other question that was coming up was in the um, 
how can I answer the question? The diagram that you showed, which was a circle that was in a pentagram and then the stars on the inside of it. You said, I think, that there is a phi ratio from the center of those, if you collapse it down to the smallest fractal, that there is a phi ratio spiral comes out of that, or golden mean ratio? Well, the, actually, the compelling, um, compelling slide in that regard, uh, maybe I'll just do one more quick screen share, just to actually do that slide, because it's kind of like the heart of the matter here. Um, let's see, I need to turn off the full screen. I can't turn off full screen here. How do I? OK, I don't have that slide here. Uh, in your presentation is about halfway through, I think. Yeah. Um, well, but if, if, you, if you go to the, the main slide of the physics, uh, the equation is integer exponents of Golden ratio times Planck. So if you take Planck length or time and multiply by integer exponent, keep multiplying by Golden ratio, you get three exact radii of hydrogen. You get the Schumann harmonics, the brainwave harmonics of bliss, you get ADP, 1.9 wave, anxious, most important frequency of the body. You get the Mayer wave, most important frequency of the blood. You get Earth year, Venus year, galactic year, and processional year. So what you get is every wavelength that emerges from chaos called the origin of neg entropy. That is a golden spiral extended precisely from Planck. And if you model that simply on the radii of hydrogen, you get that picture I showed for golden ratio spiral making the radii of hydrogen. So it isn't just hydrogen, it makes the radii of DNA and ultimately all biological oscillators, which are emerging from the entry and therefore implodes it, and therefore they can in phase contact with Okay. The second part of that question was in the golden spiral that comes out of that star formation. Is there a way of plotting a three-dimensional so that you look at not as a two-dimensional sphere to get it but a three-dimensional uh, a two-dimensional circle to a three-dimensional sphere and is there a way of mapping that out or has anybody messed with that yes um you can see the three-dimensional animation at goldenmean.info slash grail excellent okay grail. It's, it, it's simply the golden spiral on the cone which makes the Holy Grail, it's a path into the blood, obviously, a perfect implosion. And I could show that here, but I'm having some problems with the software right now. But uh, if, if I may say that uh, the three-dimensional view of that spiral on the cone made the grail, but the two-dimensional, the, I'm sorry, the three-dimensional view of that spiral on the torus, where's my donut? Oh, yeah, here it is. If I take that same spiral on this torus, and I take that 3D spiral, self-organizing and self-organizing seven color map, I get the shadows of a spiral torus indexed by a tetra, which are named Hebrew and Sanskrit alphabet. Wow. Uh, Goldenmean.info slash DNA ring. That conversation was part of other lectures, but you, all the animations were there. Okay. I'm sitting here going through my notes really quick and some of the questions that came in. Um, One of the questions was, we went into Schauberger, you went into Schauberger and the moment of electrical uh, production, there was a decrease in the temperature of the yeah. water. Yeah, spontaneously getting cold. And, yeah, and uh, Schauberger used uh, his spirals, two of them, and took the water from one bucket, ran it up through the spiral of another, and then collected the difference in the charge across the tips, and you, you got a electrical discharge at oh, yeah. the top. Yes, yes. <laughs> our our Scharberger team in Australia, Martin Selecki, they've done that experiment absolutely, along with Calico. It's an easy one to do. Yeah. It's a yeah, yeah. very easy one to do. It's, it's gorgeous. Very fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and so that and that charge also the, the negativity of that charge has an implication for gravity making. If you even understand Searle, that high electro DC electronegativity is actually related directly to propulsion. So electronegativity and, and uh, creating gravity are directly related. Okay. 
Pontus, did you have any other questions that came out of the chats? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I can help out. I've got. Okay, if you uh, would, please, Crystal. Yeah, I've got uh, two questions here from chat from Sahar Shekani. Uh, so why objects go straight as they fall and not like flash water in vortex? Then. Um. Well, the direction of gravity is always toward the center of mass, which we now know is the center of charge implosion. Uh, so obviously the direction of acceleration would be straight to earth. Uh, however, um, if, if you were floating in a water system or a wind vortex, then there would be some deflection on the way, but the gravity itself is simply accelerating a charge through the center. So in, in effect, what you can think of, the ether, is a superconducting fluid, a wind of charge. And that wind of charge that we name the gravity is always accelerating toward the center of the earth. Now, so that's where we fall to. But if, if we think of the, the way consciousness is taught, you if you follow with your attention where the gravity is taking you through your feet to the center of the earth, you arrive at the heart of the sun with your attention. And that's introducing you to the physics of how it is that attention is directly related to center of gravity. And in fact, as you grow up and inhabit the stars, your attention becomes a center of gravity and stars like the sun, in fact, need us to stabilize their gravity, sun gods. Mm. Right, so that's another question from Alexander. Is there a curriculum that we can become certified to learn Dan's beautiful work then? <laughs> well, um, we're getting more organized. You can find all four or five of my books at fractalfield.com and 200 videos on our YouTube channel and our chat is on Facebook. All the links are at fractalfield.com, the homepage there. And we're getting more organized in that. You know, I did world tours for 15 years um, and teaching a four and eight day curriculum. And we have a whole body of students who have done that work. And now we're evolving that toward a shared technology, uh, plasma, therify.net. So we're working on that. Thank you for a good suggestion. Meantime, you know, we have lots of videos <laughs> and material is available. Uh, Crystal, you brought up a great point with the first question that you brought up. And I'm gonna ask this second follow-up question to Dan on this. When we talk about gravity and we take a look at the physics of it, your answer originally was absolutely correct from a point of view of the surface of the planet or as you're approaching it. When you pull back away from the planet, it falls in a spiral in the golden mean. Well, the, the that, gravity... That, yeah, that's right. As you get more free in the environment, in fact, what is true is that the master geometry of all planetary orbitals is golden ratio. That's well known, uh, spirosolaris.ca. And the reason that all planetary orbitals master geometry is golden ratio, that's proven, is because that's the only way to stabilize gravity. So you're right. The, the ultimate free fall as you're further away would be a golden spiral ultimately. In fact, that would be the perfect path down the perfect vortex if the vortex were perfect. So very good point. I like it. <laughs> well, it, it goes to the notion that not only does our planet rotate around the sun, the sun is rotating through the galaxy and the planets are behind that direction and they're traveling in an ellipse. And if you're falling to one of those planets, that distance is getting smaller, so that spiral is getting smaller as you follow into that. that. That's, that's beautiful, beautiful. And also, you know, in the famous seed in the egg in the um, Gurdjieff literature, I have the golden mean info slash seed and egg picture, that if you take the geometry of the Earth as a dodeca ratcheting helically around the sun in that 3D trail, it actually makes a map of DNA electrically, which makes the, the sh plasma shadow of the earth, the genetic material of the solar system, which is literally a seed in the egg about to be in fer fertilizing galaxy. That's the metaphor that's developed. 
Interesting. Interesting. Crystal, did you have another question? Yes. Uh, then you were talking about rotating conjugators, uh, energy and propulsion right. source of tomorrow. Well, right. so we will pay attention on that. If you've got classes on that, I, I think uh, the R&D team here would really certainly want to learn from you. More well, you know, you know, basically, um, once you have your nanomaterials pure enough, and then uh, they're rotated. Um, remember, the, the, met the metaphor here would be um, when you rotate a DC disc magnet called Faraday disc de Palma principle, you get a, a voltage from gravity, which is nonlinear. Bruce de Palma spent half his life on that, and Adam Trombley, I knew those people, and Tom Valone and I built one. Um, but that was only a crude intro to what a rotating conjugator does to cohere the vacuum. So visualize a fullerene, the hottest subject in all of chemistry, uh, in a thin film of those. And um, when it's done correctly with uh, adequate purity, but then you use equations to get both the diameter, the cone angle, and the spin rate all phase conjugate to Planck. And when that's done accurately, you have both energy and propulsion and we uh, have serious plans to replace all the energy and propulsion of this planet <laughs> because it's crude until we do that. Rotating conjugators basically are how, how life force create, is created. Mm. And it's really fascinating to hear you uh, talk about how vision is a squeezing plasma donut. Uh, we certainly want to know more about that and learn from you. And you, you were talking about also how when a, a self-realized uh, monk or a Lama uh, Tibetan monk uh, who died, they, 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 they produce this rainbow yeah. um, in well, the, yeah. sorry, well, the rainbow, rainbow body that people can see actually through their vision. Well, it, what's simply been observed is rainbows show up when great Tibetan saints die. That's documented. But now we know that once you know the reason rainbows exist, which is implosive charge compression, you can see that the, the death of a great being, also true when great storms cross Australia, when the Aboriginal elders die, the physics is teachable. So uh, the way to start thinking about that is when that child first sees that little tube appear inside their head where they start to be able to see without their eyes, what have they done? They have squeezed the vortex mm -hmm. to tune. It's like teaching a tornado to come to a point. Not only do we know that focused consciousness causes charge to compress, Bill Tiller measured a hundred times. No one who defines the physics of consciousness has done so unless they know why focused attention causes electric fields to compress. Well, guess what? If you measure how centripetal you are, you measured how conscious you are. Simple. And, uh, and it, that's electrical. It's not subjective. And so the child who's learning to see without their eyes, they've grabbed that plasma donut, which is the field around their head, and they focused the vortex. And when you focus that vortex, that is an eyeball. Wow. <laughs> it's fantastic the way you explain it. Because I've been wondering how this lady here and, in the UK, just on the outskirts of London, is teaching classes of children with, sure. with their eyes blindfolded yeah. and they can see and read everything yes. blindfolded. Yeah. That's, that's happening around the world. But we're teaching the physics and the biofeedback to make that teachable by measurement. The other thing I would point out is every major shaman, we had a whole planet of global solar shamans. Heart, it's called the solar heart community at yahoogroups.com. And they were all seeing through the eye of the sun. And every advanced shaman who has entered the sun, my Kundalini teacher, Bentoff, uh, you see through the eye of the earth and see through the heart of the sun. Every single one of them said the sun was an eyeball. Now we know exactly why. So the clairvoyant saw the Anu, the seven spins, five spin, perfect slipknot, which is the heart of hydrogen, the heart of the human, the heart of DNA, and the heart of the sun, that perfect slipknot, Anu meaning sun god. Well, the reason the clairvoyant saw that perfect slipknot of vortex plasma, the heart of the sun, is that's what an eyeball is. So it's more than metaphor when we draw tornadoes with eyeballs. And further, until we learn how to steer plasma, our tornadoes will not be steered. Thank you, Dan, for demystifying that. <laughs>
Right. I, I just still have two questions from the okay. uh, press. Is that all right? From the uh, chat. Yes, go right ahead. Because I'll come back with one them. more plas uh, vortex plasma thing. Go ahead. Yeah. No, this is from the chat. From go the right ahead. Uh, well, the same people basically. Go right uh, ahead. After these two questions, we're going to move to Ulf. Ulf uh, has come in as well. Um, so Ulf might have questions for them. So uh, Ulf, you can unmute yourself after these two questions are answered. Okay. So uh, it's uh, Saha again, uh, who says, um, it, so if center of the earth is what created gravity point for ether, should we assume correct that after dying as Mayan wisdom data, our essence should go down before moving out then? It, it was true that when my Kundalini teacher, Bentoff, stalking a wild pendulum first had his kundalini from the solar plexus actually, he could feel he could wiggle the entire body of the earth before he saw through the eye of the earth into the heart of the sun. So actually the physics there I would describe as a series of slingshots that the center of the earth's center of gravity is what gives you the inertia to enter the heart of the sun. And that gives you the inertia and enter where the sun's wormhole goes to, which happens to be Andromeda actually. And so it's a series of nested recursive embedded slingshots of centers of gravity, which are actually the center of attention. And that is actually how the plasma body of angels are formed uh, as John D. And I had some memories of that. And I remind you that every single scientist at plasmauniverse.com believes in angels. Ah, cool. So this is platform where science meets spirituality. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Right, uh, next question. Then please describe, this is from Alexander, please describe more on the ET's ability to navigate space time. Um, well, the, the more primitive ETs are still using impulse propulsion and metal craft. The advanced ones, their craft are mostly made of genetic like material. And that kind of high dielectric enables them to use what you would call stargates more efficiently. The Stargate is basically the same kind of broad spectral phase conjugate plasma implosion that we have with Therophon.net, but more broad spectral and higher wattage. That's what a Stargate is. So the fact that we've already measured our ability to induce, induce lucid dreaming, let's call it the Jody Foster effect in the dodec, indicates we know how to build a Stargate. It's simply the same kind of plasma propulsion. The thing is, to understand that the send point and the receive point have to have the exact same matching broad spectral signature so that you're tuning and detuning as you enter and leave that array. And there is some uh, deeper emotional uh, lesson here. Uh, I give the example when Billy Myers was being beamed up to the Pleiadian starship. One day he was angry and that emotion prevented the beaming process. And actually, if you understand the physics of successful death, you cannot do it if you're angry because only shareable waves survive because only those enable compression acceleration. So there's an emotional component to this, which is seldom dealt with in the Gaia people who are talking about stargates because they don't understand the physics. Well, then, then, you, you are not so much on uh, the Tegetian Pleiadians uh, messages, uh, which uh, Valerie and I are into so much. Uh, I just wanted to make some comparisons here. So when it comes to navigating their ships, right, it's more like uh, it's all about vibrations and frequencies. So well, the, the crafts actually really uh, integrate with the, the, the navigator's consciousness. And the, if the navigator thinks this direction, it goes this direction, thinks that direction, it goes that direction. So it's all about the, uh, the, the, the vibrational frequency signature, isn't it? The, the advanced craft, absolutely. The more advanced craft, it's literally the center of gravity of the attention of the star navigator. That was mm -hmm. called a guild navigator in Dune. The reason they were floating in a soup of gold powder because it was a high dielectric so they could become more centripetal. But that's advanced and requiring a great you know, discipline. The more mechanical craft use, this, use actually impulse power and, and uh, mercury vortex. I, I would point out that 
um, you know, that take off in Pleiadians, the Andromedans were quite clear, their gene pool falls apart in seven to 900 years because they've been using uninsoled mechanisms of replication. And that, in fact, that's one of the reasons their extreme matriarchy means there's only about 20% surviving males who are often abused. Uh, mm -hmm. So they definitely have a genetic agenda here that they're not admitting. And that agenda is their DNA is falling apart. And the difference is uh, literally having this soul, which is this longitudinal coherent body. So even though the Kumar, the Greys did many abductions, they were paid by others. And those who they abducted were the lucid dreamers. And that's a clue why, because they had a coherent longitudinal body. And that is the difference between us understanding or being abused by agendas and why the Pleiadians were tossed out of the Galactic Federation for abusing humans. They're famous for abusing males. Mm, thank you for that bit. Um, I was going to uh, bring this down a little bit and try to bring in some of our <laughs> not so brainiacs that, that have been playing in physics and stuff. And we go into, you know, what I was going to do is a example of a vortice where we take a toroidal field of smoke and we shoot it and it causes the smoke ring to form. You can do this if you're smoking cigarettes and you pop your lips and it, it sets across. The interesting thing about this toroid field of smoke that's holding, it'll hold that pattern for quite a few feet. And I've played in the desert with these and we've shot them up almost a thousand feet in the air. And what happens is it travels in almost a straight line from the point of origin and it, it's stable. And so in the physical, where we're seeing these things go through, you know, it, a smoke ring travels and you're talking about a thought smoke ring and running your vision through it as another way of trying to explain it to folks. Well, yes, that's a beautiful metaphor and exactly right. I would add that um, it is said that when you enter the collective unconscious as a plasma longitudinal torus, what makes you insoluble enough to sustain that smoke ring is a perfectly shareable thought. In other words, if there's any kind, if you have distilled every experience of your life into a pure principle that serves all of survival, that inertia only can enter the collective unconscious and sustain you as that smoke ring. Very good, very good. Back to you, Crystal, that, that fills think, out all Ulf, my list. I think Ulf would want to have a question with Dan, right, Ulf? You there, Ulf, you wanna unmute yourself? Okay, Ulf doesn't want to speak up. Uh, uh, I, I have a question for Dan. Okay. Uh, how about the longitudinal waves? Uh, is there any way we can shield it? We know that uh, longitudinal EMF goes right through a Faraday cage, no problem. In yeah. fact, when Ingo Swan repeatedly heated that thermistor with him, his mind at a distance through a Faraday cage in the lab was measured repeatedly. We know the brainwave frequency signature that enabled him to make that longitudinal wave to light that flame with his mind. That's why we named our software flameinmind.com. So the short answer to your question is actually no. The more interesting is that that nodal information is only available at the fractal nodes. So when Karatkov entered the wilderness with the Kogi to measure where the only place they could telephone their ancestors and prove that the air there was fractal, which is to say charge distribution efficient, we now have three ways of measuring sacred space. And that is the definition. Mm -hmm. The only place a Kozi Rev mirror could be placed at the magnetic cross to enable the military quality telepathy. So the nodal array is key to be able to receive it. And no, there's no way to shield. But there's, a, there's an opposite side of that coin. And that is, if we live in steel and aluminum buildings, the Schumann harmonics do not get in and the ancestor memory cannot speak. So it, it, because it, the reason is not that, the, that the, the steel aluminum building is shielding the longitudinal. The reason is that the dielectric constant of the steel and aluminum building doesn't let the weak, very weak Schumann cascade into that building. So if you can't hear the Schumann harmonics, which is what makes trees and plants grow, ancestors cannot speak to you. 
And that was the most important thing to do in your life if you're an Aboriginal, is talk to your ancestors. <laughs> Right, I think um, Axel, would you, Axel, would you like to unmute yourself? Uh, uh, Axel is an avid uh, student of the dance, um, a, a good friend of dance as well. Perhaps you want to ask them a couple of questions, Axel? I don't have any question, <laughs> but uh, it's nice to listen to it. Yeah. Hi, Axel. Hey, Hi. You know, a Axel is working with this sun gazing, and it's very interesting that even the Essenes, when they're charging this diamond light body, they were taught to do sun gazing, particularly on the horizon when the sun is on the sea and you have the, the sun reflecting on the water and an increased longitudinal component. And that's how the Essenes built their light, diamond light body. It's related. It's a beautiful, beautiful wow, study. Wow, well explained then. I love that. Uh, we have a yeah, Earlier we were saying we were students of Sun Yogi. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Valerie, me, and uh, Axel. Yeah. And Axel is the biographer of Sam Yogi. Yeah. Okay, uh, Alfres, yes, over to you, yeah, Coach. We have uh, Noberg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very much. I'm gonna try, I'll do the best I can, but oh, uh, the mic's yours. Go ahead, ask your question. Oh, okay, I just have a, a one, one short question because then you just talked about uh, the fact that the aluminium uh, walls somehow shield the Schumann resonance. And I wondered, can we somehow, let's say, deal with the problem um, if we create the Schumann magnetic field artificially inside the building on our own? And I accidentally have here, um, I don't know if you know this, it's, it's a Rodin coil. And yeah. I, I tried some, to do some experiments with it. And the aim was practically to uh, let's say when I have a flight or something to generate the 7.83 uh, hertz magnetic field on my own so that I'm somehow connected to the Schumann resonance. Do you think this makes any sense or is it is it like a stupid idea? Uh, well, let me put it this way. Um, the reason the Schumann harmonic cascade is the, the nipple that connects you to the milk of mother is because what's of what's modulated on it. So you can give a baby a nipple which has the right shape, but no milk in it. And that's gonna last not very long. Yeah, makes absolutely sense. Thank you. Yeah. Good question. All right, anybody else? How are we doing on time? Uh, uh, I think um, we, we have to move on to the next sessions very, very soon, but we, I think uh, we could take one or two more, uh, more questions first. All right. Just uh, one or two more. Oh, there she is. Uh, Shahar. Uh, Shahar has been asking Hi. <laughs> questions. I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm so Shahar. stuck up. Yeah, I'm, I'm so stuck you. up with yeah. proper dying. I'm just like desperate to get out of this planet. So yeah, pardon I, me. I, I have asked two, two of your questions already. We'll give others a chance. Yes, no, it's, really, it's like I'm all death focused and Dan knows very well. So I did have a near death experience. This is, this is where, um, again, I don't want to intellectually overthink it because I know that universe has a way of taking care of itself if the will and intention is there. So I do believe sincerely in that. But in my near-death experience, the way I felt that um, I left the physical body was not so much of feeling that I was in a spiral vortex, but so much of like expanding. And I explained to Dan, it felt like like air that exits the balloon and it just becomes air, but it's consciously aware. And in that moment of consciousness, there was only two things that in, in human mind, you could put your finger on. You said like love and awareness. And it was just luminous colors, like all the luminous colors. And there was a lot of pink and yellow in it. Um, so I wonder, um, it was, it was, it was a strange NDE. There was no heart stop, so I can't physically back it. I just want to seed my consciousness. When my proper actual death comes, does that mean after that, after that moment of expansion, there would be a vortex that I need to follow? Well, 
with the eye. Would there be a vortex of going back to the center of the earth so that you can go beyond? I just don't want to be trapped here. Let me put it down. <laughs> Somebody get me out of here. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my echo. Just whatever we know. Remember that um, the, the article is goldenmean.info slash immortality. And we have the graphic of the Clouvet form constants, the sequence of geometries seen at death. And we now know the audio component of the uh, infrasound that you hear during successful death. And we know that it's a black hole. And we know that's why death visions are electric and contagious. So you can prepare by preparing for compression, which is basically sacred space. It gives you that inertia to remain centripetal. The longer you can remain centripetal, the longer you can maintain your focus. And that's the thread of your memories. So yes, you're gonna feel that expansion, but if you can keep the discipline of the centripetal moment, which is why the Tibetan uses that sustained drumming to keep the attention of the one who just died so that there can be discipline for that centripetal moment so that you can keep the thread of that vortex of your awareness. And yes, eventually that will be uh, the geometry of the centers of mass of sacred space. So, you know, the, the north point of New Zealand is where all the Maoris go when they die and they know where and why they're going to be projected from there. So there's a lot to that science. Yeah, Fres, I think we don't have time anymore. Um, we got to move on to the, the second session. We, we just need to close. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, I, I can't take any other questions. I can see very long statements rather than short, sweet questions for Dan. So... Uh, <laughs> but, well, thank you, Crystal. We had, a, we had a lot of fun. I'm happy to share. Did, People can yeah. connect with me at info at fractalfield.com. And yeah. thank you for providing such a beautiful platform. Oh, our pleasure. Anytime, Dan. And we'd love to have you back. Yeah. At Send some point. Again. <laughs> Namaste. All Namaste. right. So, Fres, shall Bye, I wrap up now? Well, what I would say is, uh, how can folks find out about Dan? You know, by going to our website and then we'll wrap this up. Yes. Pontus, do you have any last day before we close the meeting and move to the next session? Agenda oh. next. Uh, thank you so much, Dan, for your presentation. Nice to listen to. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy to be with you. Uh, we let's, have our, our a shareable R &D. wave. Yeah. yeah. We have our other R and D team members here, but they're not Take speaking care. up. So <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Dan. Namaste. Uh, it, it's be. so wonderful yeah. to have you here with us. Uh, so there being no other business now, this first session of our 86th Physic meeting is now adjourned to the second session. Thank you, folks. Stay on. Don't go away. Thank you. Because we're going to start. We take a short little break to bond, and then we're going to start the second session. Okay? All right. You can stop recording.